Emerald the Quilter, and I have been making all of the quilts from the Perfect Five Quilts book by It's So Emma. There's links in the description box below if you do not have your copy. And today I'm going to show you how to finish laying out all of these beautiful scrappy blocks from the Pizzelle quilt. And I'm so excited because for two reasons, I have been wanting to finish this quilt for like the last three weeks now and I finally get to. It is turning out more beautiful than I ever anticipated that it would be. It's my new favorite quilt from this book as of now. And the other reason I'm so excited is because that means that I am actually halfway done with this entire book. My next quilt is going to be from the three charm pack category. So yay, I'm making a lot of progress and I hope you guys are too. So I have pre-recorded some of the video footage in making this top half of the quilt and I'm gonna share those and then we'll catch up to where I am right now. So I've laid out all of my blocks and I did my best to separate a lot of the brighter, more saturated colors. So these reds and I also have some like dark navies or blacks, these more saturous greens. Um, and then of course there were a lot of these from the Florida lines, that sort of like teal color. They are all spread out and it actually didn't take me as long as I thought it was going to take. I just had to um, sort of swap out a few at the end because the most important thing was making sure that I was following the right direction. So they're all facing inward. So this is gonna be like one block. This is gonna be another block all together unless I decide to sew them in rows and then you know I'll have to keep an eye on that but that's two ways you can do it. You could make it by one you know square one chunk or you can do it by rows. I sewed the top four rows together and decided that was going to be the easiest thing for me to do because I didn't want to stop too often with these four units here to make one block and I am loving how it's looking because this sort of like, I forget what this was, like a white flannel just wasn't helping me visualize what the final product was gonna look like. And now it's like, yay, wow, I'm loving this scrappy quilt. I can't wait to put the sashing in, which I'm going to do right now. Oh my goodness. This quilt is beautiful. I love the grid. It's like a secondary pattern. And if you keep looking at it, you can see other patterns like stars. And it's just so interesting. Like this X, you see that X? Kind of looks like a star or the center as it's supposed to be. This quilt is beautiful. Oh my goodness, I can't stop looking at it. So now I have to start the bottom half and I really, really, really love it. As you can see, I decided to sew all of my blocks into rows. So I felt that that was just most easy for me instead of sewing them into these sort of larger blocks just because it was difficult for me to remember where everything went, even though I had the picture, my brain just didn't work that way. So I left the last row for you to see that even though these blocks are facing different directions, if you lay them down exactly as they are with the sashing units, to your right, you will remember where they go. And so that is how I did all of my rows. And so I hope you find this helpful. Of course, if you want to sew yours into larger squares, go ahead, whatever works for you, but this is what I did. Now be very careful when you bring your blocks over to remember that the last one on the right, it needs to stay with you, but you are not sewing your sashing to it 
because on the right side of that unit, it does not have any sashing. So keep it close, but don't add your sashing. And I'm just going to add my sashing to all of these pieces. And I know you guys are wondering if I decided to make more blocks. And let me tell you, I really wanted to so badly. I looked at my border fabric and all of you guys voted or almost everyone unanimous, unanimously voted on the little flowers fabric. And I did not have enough of that if I were to add two more rows and two more columns. And it ended up needing to be two more rows and two more columns because of the design of the pattern. Every large block is made of those four squares where the triangles are facing inwards. And so if I were to only add that ninth row and that ninth column, it would be like an incomplete portion of the pattern. And I would have had enough to do that, so nine rows and nine columns, but I did not like the way that that looked because I think what makes this quilt so fun is that it has that secondary design where there's like a sort of like a square that's broken up facing each other and then you also see like X's and then grids and I just didn't want to ruin that. I wanted it to stay true to the pattern and so unfortunately I did not have enough border fabric to make it a 10 by 10 block quilt. I really wish that I had but now that I know this, this quilt works amazingly for scraps, this is definitely one of the quilts that I would make again. Now, I don't do that with most of my quilts. Most of my quilts I make just once, but there are some quilts where I have made them two or even three times. So this is one of those. I love it that much. And underneath here, I have my rows. These have just one more seam. And I have been pressing the seams towards the sashing because there's another piece of sashing that goes in between every row. So there are no intersections to worry about there. But I love that you guys had an opinion on which border. Thank you so much for commenting, and I'm glad that you enjoyed my last video. I, I have really been wanting to make this quilt for so long, and I had no idea that it was going to be such a happy quilt. Uh, so now I'm wondering, it's like, since I'm going to be making, you know, another eight quilts after this one, I'm probably gonna have more scraps from these charm packs where either in like the three or four charm pack category, maybe the four charm pack category, I'll be able to have enough charm square scraps that I can make another scrappy quilt. So that, now I'm excited all over again to see where this is gonna take me because this has been such an awesome journey making all of these quilts. These are gonna have to go to the iron, and these squares here are from that last row, which I am going to use my phone to see that picture and lay them out just as they are supposed to be. So I know you can't see my phone, but I just put it to my left and this kind of got out of order. This one looks like it goes 
you know, I put them in order, but then I grab them out of order. That doesn't help. <laughs> that does not help. You're not supposed to do that. Don't do what I just did. See, and then this one goes with my little birdies here. Just gonna push this, get it attached right here underneath that foot. And I'm just giving these a press so that they're easy to work with. And I wonder, have any of you started making this particular pattern? And if you have, are you also using scraps or are you using a collection? I would love to know what you have decided to do. And it looks like I'm missing something. This one is going to go with this piece here. And then this one is going to go with this piece here. I'm focusing, guys. <laughs> I'm trying to concentrate. Okay. And then this one is going to connect to those. Okay. Here we go. And I know that I have been working on this quilt along for, I think it's going to, soon it's going to be like a year and a half. Um, and I've only made eight of those quilts, um, including those quilt, these quilt tops, right? So this one from today, and then the last one that I finished, which is still with the long armor. Um, but that's also because I'm making a lot of other projects in between and then filming and editing, it takes up a lot of time. So just because I'm taking a long time to make these quilts does not mean that you have to go at my pace. So you can go faster um, and you don't have to make all the quilts like I am. I just really wanted to make all of these quilts for fun. And so I thought maybe people out there would enjoy it because the patterns were just based on like solid colors and I really wanted to see, well, what they would look like with actual fabric. Okay, now I am ready to Oops, I need to cut the rest of these. Open these up. And see, where do these go? This one is going to go with this guy here. And then this one goes here and I swear I have lost one of my squares. Let's see. I'm gonna have to see if I dropped it on the floor behind me. I probably did. I probably did. Oh no, I see it. It's up on my design wall because I was using it to help me measure. <laughs> <laughs> the length of my borders. Oh, it is right up there. I'm going to grab it. That happens to all of us, doesn't it? We lose things. <laughs> like, I swear I have five pairs of scissors, but I can never find them. almost freaked out there for a moment. It's like, I know I made all my blocks. <laughs> Cause I was sewing too fast to record them. I was having too much fun. 
Okay, now let me see where these are going to go and I'm gonna grab that block that's on the wall. Here is what one completed row looks like in all of its happy glory. And I have my pins with me ready. You can see that I only used a few pins. And the reason for that is because the length of the row is just under the length of the yardage of the sashing. So you can see here's the selvage on one end and on the other end is the other piece of selvage. So I have four pins going through, not too many, and I was specific about where I placed them. I intentionally placed them on the seams that are facing the needle and the foot of my sewing machine because oftentimes when you're running it through, this flips that way and it can sometimes make your quilt top chunky in that area and that can cause a problem. But other times it's um, not a big deal at all. So I just place them there because why not? I need pins. And I wanted to just take a moment because someone mentioned in the comments that they would love a pattern for my um, mouse that I have with pins. And so um, here it is. You are welcome to pause the video and take a screenshot of this. Um, please know everyone that I am not a um, professional pattern writer. Uh, it looks like I made this in September. <laughs> of 2020 and um, this was like a pouch I made but um, you should know that I remember there being something wrong with this and for those of you who have been quilting for a long time you may look at like my numbers and know right away what's wrong but what I remember was that when I sewed this triangular prism together I had too much fabric so that's a good problem to have because you can cut that away, right? Um, so I cut the excess fabric off and then I made a triangular prism um, just like you would any triangular prism. I did, um, before I sewed the fabric pieces together, I fused interface, so fusible interfacing to all of these and then cut it to that shape and I filled it with the walnut um, little shaving tiny grains. And um, my yo-yos that are together on the tail right here, I um, used, I think it was a floss, and I went through the yo-yos like a couple times so that the tail would be sturdy. And then one yo-yo with a button in the yo-yo hole to make it extra cute for the ears. So please, you know, feel free to use this and change it up and fix it up. <laughs> I will not be offended and um, I hope you enjoyed that. So there is like my little mouse pattern, which is not a super great pattern, but you know, there it is. And don't forget to sew your cutaways. I have been sewing mine. I have not pressed any of them, but I've been working slowly on cutting off the little um, ears. I plan on pressing them flat open like this and maybe I'll put them on the back but these are just so fun. Um, I know I'm not going to do a bonus project video because I've already done two of those and so you know it's just more half square triangles but I will show you in the end what I end up doing with these so don't throw them away, don't set them aside, go ahead and put them together. So now we just have to sew our sashing on all of these rows. We are almost done and I can't wait to see what these beautiful little red flowers are gonna look like on the rest of this quilt. It already looks amazing as it is on my design board um, and I only have two pieces up there. And this quilt has just been so easy and so fun to make. 
I am finishing this quilt tonight. I do not care how long I stay up. I deserve it. This quilt is going to be one that I snuggle with a lot. I already know. We all have our favorite quilts. We have our favorite quilts that are like, no, don't ever touch this. <laughs> and then we also have our favorite quilts that we actually like to use. And so this is gonna be one of those. I love this quilt. And I'm just, as I'm sewing, I'm just making sure that nothing is getting pulled. So the top is going through my foot um, just as evenly as my sashing is. And the pins definitely help. So for this project, it is important to pin your longer pieces of sashing. bit closer that way so you can see what's going on and so the more I worked on this quilt I just knew that I'm gonna have to make another scrappy quilt with the perfect five quilts book it, it has just been so much fun it really has and then mixing all of these collections has been a wonderful experience because most of the quilts that I make, they are typically either um, fabrics with one designer or one collection. And so this is out of what I usually do. I don't make too many scrappy quilts. I tend to make, um, you know, between one and three a year, and everything else I make is, you know, very organized, very specific. And you could make this quilt as big or as small as you want to. Just remember if you want to stay true to the pattern that design to add rows and columns and pairs. That's all you have to do. Just got one more of these here and I am going to press these open, not open, excuse me, press these towards the sashing off screen because it's just gonna go by really quick and I know you guys know how to do that. And I will also pin these pieces to the next row. And before you know it, I will have the bottom half of my quilt top. So I have just a few more seams to go. I'm constantly checking my edges. What's also great about this pattern is if you by accident make all your blocks a little larger or all of them a little smaller, you can trim them to be the exact size. And it's unlikely, depending on how much you trim, that no one would ever know, even you, because there are no intersecting points. And then your little triangles at the end here if they're all consistently cut, you know, maybe an eighth of an inch in or a quarter of an inch in, then it'll look like it's supposed to be that way. So this is a perfect beginner quilt pattern. 
it really is and it's just sometimes it's just fun when you do difficult patterns often to do something easy like this okay i will be right back i'm back with my rows pinned together and i just want to show you that I pinned five times and the most important places were on either end, in the middle, and then in between the pins that were on the ends and in the middle. So a total of five. And that's going to help keep all of the rows the same length so nothing is sticking out and then there won't be any um, unnecessary trimming of your blocks. And you also should pay attention to the direction that you're sewing from. So remember um, when I was sewing the sashing onto the rows, I had um, my blocks facing down and right now I'm actually not doing what I said that I'm supposed to be doing, so I need to stop completely um, and I probably did that because I'm on camera but last time I had this facing down right with the sashing up it's important for you to go the opposite direction okay so I'm going to restart I'm not going to rip out that seam that I did because it was very little But the reason for this is to keep your quilt top from leaning towards one side. So let's say you always sew on, like pretend that there's um, sashing in between every row. And you always sew with your sashing on the bottom or your, you always sew with your sashing on the top. Well. When you're done with your quilt top, it's going to lean by several inches towards one side. And that is because um, your fabric is made of itty bitty threads and it moves. And your thread that you use to sew holds those fibers into place in that direction. So you sew with your sashing up and then your sashing down and then your sashing up and your sashing down and so on. That will prevent your quilt top from leaning one way. And I'm glad that I caught that before I sewed too much. Yeah, I only did like two blocks. That's not a big deal at all. Now I'm going to sew this next one here. And I have my next fabrics already selected out for two of the quilts that I'm going to be making from the three charm pack category. And I'm so excited to show those to you. So make sure you watch all the way to the end. I'm going to be making a Christmas quilt. So that's one. And I know today is, is it the 16th? February the 16th? It's Friday. So I'm filming on Friday. And I know you don't usually make Christmas quilts in February. You know, you, we usually do Christmas in July. But um, I found the most perfect background fabric for one of the charm packs that I had. I could not resist getting a charm pack to go with the charm pack that I had that was, it's by Moda and um, it's a different line, but they go so well together. And all I'm missing is a third charm pack. But I will have it in time to film 
I just need to decide on one. So I can't wait to show you my Christmas fabrics. And I'm going to show you again my more spring color fabrics for another three charm pack quilt. So this is looking fantastic, guys. Look at that. Wow. Isn't this beautiful? This is just so great. I love this quilt. I could make this quilt like for my king size bed. I'm not exaggerating. I love it that much. So I'll be back because I got to press these seams and then pin keep on going. Here we are with just two more seams left with these rows and I know you guys get the idea. So after this I'm going to sew that last one off camera and then bring you back to the design wall so that you can see what the border is going to look like all the way around. And then we can finally see the final product. Yay! So let me know in the comments below if you've made this quilt or if you're in the process of it or if you made a scrappy quilt with one of the other patterns in the Perfect Five Quilts book. I know I can't be the only one out there who has made more than one of the quilts from there. Okay guys, I have my center of the quilt up on the design wall and I added the other two ends to the sides and it looks amazing it's so beautiful I can't wait to add these borders on I'm going to do that right now and you can see that this pattern was written I wonder if it was done intentionally because look how much space is from the top of this quilt to the selvage and then down here to the bottom right there there's the other end and then there's the selvage so if you want to make this quilt larger and I'm sure many people are gonna want to do that you're going to need to sew your fabric strips together to make longer pieces or cut along the other side of your yardage. But let me go ahead and finally add these borders. My quilt top is done. Take a look. Isn't this amazing? The border was perfect, guys. You voted well. It looks wonderful. I could not have made this quilt any better. I'm so pleased with it. There's no really right or wrong way with this quilt because like, look at that little birdie. He's just like facing that way. He's so happy. Have some little animals and little motifs facing all kinds of directions. So. 
This quilt was so fun to make, guys, and I hope you have fun making this quilt too. And don't leave because I have a few things that I wanted to share with you on the table. Here's my completed pillowcase. This was the bonus project from my Pinwheels Cookie Quilt, and I had so much fun being creative with this little pillow. These were from the cutaways of that project. And you can see my envelope back is just right for this pillow form. If you would like to know how to make this, this is from I think two videos ago in my Perfect Five Quilts playlist. So I'm so happy with this and it has been well loved on my sofa already. And here is the, um, the scrappy backing. So someone had asked about my scrappy backing that was hanging up on my design wall. At the time it was not done, but now it is. And it goes with um, this quilt. This is called the... I think it's called the Scrappy Crossroads Quilt, something like that. This is a pattern from Lori Holt's Scrappiness is Happiness. Um, if I haven't already, I'll look to see if I can put it in the um, description box below. So if you're interested in that, you can use my Amazon links to get your copy. Lots of beautiful patterns in that book. And here is the backing that I made to go with this quilt top. And I made a scrappy backing because my goal last year was to use as much of the fabric as I had, um, as I could, excuse me. And um, one of the ways I did that was to make backing. Oh look, I have a label. It's called, yeah, Scrappy Crossroads Quilt, was to make a backing when I didn't have a backing and if it was appropriate. So this is it. There is no pattern. I literally um, grabbed fabrics from my little cubbies behind me that I have used so many times and I just wanted them out of like my system. So they are on the back and if there were any leftovers of this, they're a lot smaller and now they're in that behind me, which is where I keep my small scraps. So it's out of the cubby and it's going to be finally, like for the most part, all used up but um, I just laid them out and sewed them in a way that I thought it was cute. And it was a fantastic way to reduce the amount of fabric that I had in my stash. So there's that. And I'm going to bring you actually to the table for the next part um, because um, some of it, it just needs to be opened. Doesn't this quilt look fabulous up on the wall? I love it, I love it so much. So I have for you um, a sneak peek at the quilts that I'm going to be making next. So I have checked off and it was so satisfying to check off all of my two charm pack category quilts and the next two and I, I think I am gonna work on these in order and just continue to do that, is the chocolate chip cookie quilt and then the oatmeal raisin quilt. So both are three charm pack quilts. And this is what the chocolate chip quilt looks like. So if you would like to make this quilt with me, you have to come back. And I'm going to be using this charm pack, which I already had for I think a few years. And what I really like about this is that it has like this Tealer Aqua in it. And coincidentally, I found this at one of the quilt shops um, I visited recently. And it is um, a Moda Christmas line that also has metallic. And I was like, ah, oh, this is Moda and it also has metallic and it's Christmas. So they're different lines, but they go so well together. And at a different quilt shop, 
I found this. Look at this metallic background on cream with beautiful snowflakes. So I bought three yards of this and I'm crossing my fingers. It definitely should be more than enough to make the chocolate chip cookie quilt. So as you can see, I only have two charm packs and I've been debating, do I wanna try to hunt down another Moda Christmas Metallic, that's a different line, or do I just want to get another Mary Maynard Metallic because that is what is easily available right now. So I have to figure out what I'm gonna do, but I am making this quilt next. After that, I know I've shown you my honey and lavender fabric, but I have not shown you the rest of the kit that I kitted myself. And I'm using that fabric to make the oatmeal raisin quilt. And what I love about this one is these blocks are fairly large. So not lots of itty bitty little pieces like the chocolate chip quilt that is coming up. And so beautiful. I love this fabric. And it's completely ready to go. So I have background, um, binding, and backing. So I'm gonna show those to you. This is my background fabric. You can see that, I need to move the light behind me, but you can see that it has, um, excuse me, in front of me, like honeycombs on it. And, Bees, I love these bees. So these bees are for the back. And then I have this beautiful lavender, large floral print with more bees for the border. So I am doing it again where I sort of break the pattern by not using the like what's called for background as the border. Um, I'm changing it up. So you know I like to do that. And here is my very happy, reminds me of picnics, binding. So I'm excited to make these next two quilts and I hope you're just as excited as I am. Um, if you enjoy my videos, please leave me a comment below, share my videos, I really appreciate it. Um, give me a thumbs up and I can't wait to see you next time. Bye.